Hello ladies, it's Karen here from a Bible Love and Love Me Papers. I'm so sorry to confuse you with these two like channels. It's just that I wanted to create a space, you know, for my own uh, digitals and prints. And um, again, I know that some of you got confused, but uh, basically it, all the new kits that I'm uploading uh, will be on both places. It's just on the one on Etsy. There are some like older designs. Anyway, um, I'm going to share a flip through of this folio. I've created it quite some time ago, but I was occupied with making like um, house dolls, boxes and shoe and shoes and slippers, which are still all your tutorials. Um, but I thought I'll, um, I'll concentrate again with like ready-made kits that are already created uh, otherwise it's never gonna happen um, and yes yeah, just to share actually you know within time mainly on instagram a few on facebook you start to make these um, connections and friendships although i don't know you in person sometimes it feels like i do <laughs> so i just wanted to share for those that i'm in touch with more often is that um just the last couple of days that's why i was away from instagram for a bit um i i, I just literally came back from france um i didn't go there for a holiday so it was so hard to be to see people at the airport like kissing and you know seeing like people they haven't seen for some time or getting excited and going on a, I don't know, a, an, an amazing holiday when I just went actually to to see my dad's old place in France. He's not with us for good, I don't know, 16 years, just about, probably about 70, 17 years. And I just had the urge after all these years to go and just do like a closure and go and see oh I'm, I'm saying this i'm just about to cry again <laughs> and to see the old place uh, just because i've never been there since so basically while he was living there in france i was i actually just moved into the uk back then so it, we're talking like 18 19 years ago and then he wasn't well and uh, i was literally flying every other weekend to go and do the shopping and cleaning and help him with the bills and everything he needed and i would just make food for the next two weeks and i would store them in boxes and we bought an extra freezer and a microwave and all these things that he can help himself himself while we are not uh, well i'm not around so it was tough eight months uh, but I was lucky enough. I mean, he lives in a very small village uh, in south of France called Carcassonne. And I uh, I was just very lucky that there was a direct flight from London to that place for like about 1.45 hours to go and see him. So I went quite often. I, it wasn't easy because I had a young child at the time. He was only like three years old. Anyway, so then he passed away after eight months and um, I never went since. I just couldn't face it. And I, I don't know what happened to me on Monday evening. I felt like I think it was this... Father's Day that hit me after all these years. So I decided to go and see his place. So I went on a flight and I once I arrived to town I I, I booked an hotel like an Airbnb room for the night and my feet just took me to his place. Like I didn't even bother about like to put my stuff away and get organized or anything. So I went there, I didn't plan to do it this way, but that's I just couldn't resist. So I walked to his place and I just wanted to see it and I like for during all the flight I was imagining as if I if I was gonna walk into his room and I could you know I tried to visualize everything to try and prepare myself mentally so I'm arriving to the place and even though it was 16 years ago I remember it as if it was yesterday yeah, the place was not there so literally they just took the thing down built something new instead and I was just it was just like I was in such a shock that I would I just stood there looking around me and just could not believe you know of one I made all the way to see that and then it's not there and I and then people started to approach me they had no idea because I stood there for like good 10 minutes I could I, I had to take it in 
and they started to approach me. My, my French is not great. And uh, Google, then they started, they, they all wanted to know what I was looking for and what I'm doing there. It's a small village. Not exactly a village, but it's a very small town. And then they, oh my God, I wasn't going to go into all these details, but now I told you the story, I must finish it, right? So I created such a drama that I didn't create it myself. They approached me. They wanted to know what what what's, what this crazy woman standing there with a luggage and staring at, and, and at a, you know, a block of flats. So then they tried to use Google for translation to confirm to me that my, my dad's place is not there anymore. <laughs> um, so in a way, they kind of I got annoyed because I wanted to have my moment there. But I thought, you know, they were so kind and cared so much once they realized why I was there. So I decided, you know, just to smile it off and... That's what it is. Maybe in a way I felt better later the following morning that uh, maybe it helped, you know, that I didn't actually have to face his actual place once I was going to knock on the door, explain somehow why I'm doing in a stranger's house. And anyway, so I woke up in the morning about to take my flights back to the, to London and it was cancelled. So, so then I had to spend an extra day, which was hard, but I had to spend an extra day there looking for another flight, which I managed to find in another town. So I had to travel to another town, wait for good 13 hours at the airport to finally be back home uh, yesterday. So that's my story. I'm just sharing this because it's been really, really hard and I... I this morning was difficult for me because I tried to take everything in like what's going on and why dad's place is not there anymore and that's a piece of history is gone and and um, and then I thought I just must dive straight into work and speak to you and share this with you I actually didn't tell anyone else from you know in the, in the family that when the, I'm actually telling you I didn't tell my family so uh, this is me sharing this with you so sorry I never meant to spend that long explaining this so uh, I'm gonna I'm so sorry I'm gonna share this folly with you uh, I'll just mention that, that a few requests uh, on Evia Etsy from those who are just starting out and they because I'm not actually making a full tutorial um, like from the beginning with the sticking and the folding just to spend a couple of minutes more explaining which kind of paper I'm using and how exactly I'm sticking things and um, so I hope you don't mind I'll spend a couple of extra minutes going into like uh, small details so there you go so it's a folded folio and oops so it opens like this so it's quite long you don't have to i mean if you want yours shorter you can always cut it here or there and don't include this extra bit if you don't want the full closure so it falls like this and basically it comes with one page for the folio then it comes with the extra two uh, wings on the sides so you can see i stuck them I stuck them actually, one second, oh yeah, put a pocket around, that's what you can't see. So I have printed everything both sides. So the, the, on in the kit itself, uh, it will say fol main folio and it will say folio backing. So that will be the main folio and this page will be the folio backing. So when I printed the, this page for the folio, I've used this as my backing and this the two there is a page for the wings like the flaps as well so i've used the same um backing page here so it looks uh, all kind of one long big piece and then what i've done i've stuck the the flaps onto this side and i cover them with with pockets like large pockets so you can't see the joining part and I think I've done the same here. So here, I don't think I've used the pocket. I just printed an extra page of, of this, uh, of the backing page, and I trimmed the piece in this size just to cover. You don't have to do this. You just say, uh, I had this piece anyway, because I usually print few extra pages so I can decorate it all like with matching. So it's all kind of matching. So that's about the actual folio cover. Uh, then it comes with loads of 
of papers. Uh, I'll go through the folio in a minute. But and what I've done after printing them all, so it, it, in the kit it will, I think they are called folio pages one, folio page two, folio page three, and there is an extra folder just called backing pages. So I've printed all the folio pages first, and then I've printed at the back of them the backing pages. So the backing pages are slightly bigger than the 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 actual folio pages. Maybe look for an example because here I used another backing page. Um, I mean the, the folio page. Um, let me look for an example because now they are all mixed. Uh, I've got a good example here. So for example, that will be a folio page. So that will be its other side. Where is it? Here. So you see it's printed. Oh, yeah, it happened to be the middle page, so it's easy to explain. So when I printed this page, on the back of each page I've used a backing page so I've run them through the printer all of them so I didn't have to worry about either having blank pages or stick pages on or uh, stick on top of each other like a tea stain paper I just wanted to be like fully um, like the full patterns on all sides so there is lots of uh, mix and match now to actually bind everything you can actually you can just glue them with a tiny strip of uh, maybe double-sided glue just like that but it needs to be like very very thin because you don't want this to be too thick here like the edges when they start to stick on top of each other you can hand sew the, them you can punch through holes here and then tie it with a ribbon through the middle to here and what i've done um this is made on 120 gsm mm -hmm. I think this is 160 GSM so everything printed on ivory paper is it one second no this is not this is white paper so but I've printed my cover I'm pretty sure on ivory paper uh, not cream ivory it's so hard in the UK to find and sometimes you, you can find ivory paper or cards and they are called ivory but they come very creamy and lately I can hardly find any so I now using like white cards or paper, but it's not like pure white. It's more uh, like there is a tone to it. So if I don't, if I can't find ivory, I will use this one. Anyway, so this is on a thicker card, but all these papers are the inner pages are on a thinner thinner pages. I think they are a one hundred gsm. So because it wasn't that thick at the end, I took a risk. And where is the middle page? Here. I took a risk and I run it through the sewing machine as it is. So I clipped everything so nothing moves before I stack the pockets and everything. So it's easy to put it through. The, and I literally managed to put it through the sewing machine. I've got the most, uh, I don't, I don't want to say the cheapest, but quite, you know, standard basic sewing machine. And it still did like a great job here. Um, with teaching it all in one go so um, yeah so I thought I'd share this with you because with some if the with books or folios that are not too bulky then you can actually get away with like using sewing machine just with thin paper anyway so all the pockets are included in the pack I think there are a couple of pages uh, for pockets there are envelopes included all these uh, cards so I created like I added some layering and like changed the tone so it's all matching originally they are in blue <laughs> but uh, so I kind of changed the tones a bit so it matches and and what I've done I started to create the folio uh, using all the pockets so these are a few more cards you can use them actually as postcards as well or um, or even like if you create like small um, journals then you can use these as well uh, as book pages and uh, let me think what I wanted so it's an another one an extra card um, an extra card here now because the most of the pages are quite busy themselves then those ones i didn't want to add much to it because i just wanted you know that you can see the full design 
Uh, those that are blank, which are the backing pages, these are the ones I've decorated. Yes, yeah, so the, uh, these pockets come as well. So these are all the, for example, all the extras that I have. Um, so I don't bin anything. So even this small piece that I had left here, yeah, I can see it's white. I've used white card. So it's not exactly pure white, but it's a very good, like, good quality white white card and matching white paper so it absorbs the ink quite nicely uh, so i've created this ruffle pocket here and um, here's some stained tea paper that i've combined and again basically all these extras i had are used for pockets the envelopes also come these mini cards envelopes these mini tags more cards another envelope this is probably my favorite page and is this stuck here no this is lovely card as well a envelope like a gift tag or a pouch whatever you want to call it and you can put like things in there so there is an extra page called a uh, i think notepad papers so and it comes with some uh, labels and these pale kind of pattern pages so and it comes with this cover as it is so basically you fold i did i i messed it a bit that's why it looks like this but actually there is just a piece like two folds to create one here one there i hope it's clear from where you are and you are folding it twice punching two holes and then i've printed i think three or four uh, just i use like normal printer paper for this um because i wanted these to be thin pages um uh, i've printed a few of these few pages because there are i think three or four designs on each page so there is one design there's just a lined one here here's another one and i think I, i've mixed and matched them um, and then I stuck the labels as well, which come on the same page. So you're probably going to be left with some leftovers of these, but I thought I'll stick them on that page because then you can use them with any other journals you work on. Uh, so that's nice to create one very easy. You punch hole and you put something through. Um, then I'll go into just explaining all these extra bits here. So... Basically, I'm just, with all the scraps that I have left, I, as I said, I never bin them. So I just will start layer them on top of each other. And then um, uh, sometimes we'll add fabric, sometimes I won't. So basically, this is, I believe, tea stain paper, which I embossed an extra leftover card. And here one as well. And um, here as well. I had this mini piece, I believe that these mini pieces that you see, even this one here and this one here, is when you trim the backing page, which was printed on the back of the folio pages, then you are left with all these leftovers when you trim around because they are bigger. So I basically, when I trim everything, I put aside these little bits. And then at the end, when I finish my folio and I've got some empty areas this is when you start you can start sticking them on top of each other and it's just a lovely addition to it um even these bits here i it was i believe on a, p a bigger piece of card and i just looked for areas where they were printed not just a pattern and i'd use this um here i think it's a tea ah uh, yeah that's a tea stain paper which i embossed and I had a few of these, so I thought I'll just add this here because the color was matching. And I think, if I can, yeah, these are just again extra bits that I feel. These are from leftovers as well, these mini pockets. And the, oh, I missed that page before. So all these little ones and uh, these like mini, mini cards. Uh, I probably need to think of a way to decorate it a bit more, but for now they are just all in here. Uh, I had some space, like left uh, room left on the page, so I thought I'll create because it comes in this. Um, like there are a few of these, uh, these these cards, so I thought I will. I don't like empty spaces. I will always add with something. So these are here, and. That's it really. This is the thing, this stained paper. 
I've used lace throughout. Must be something in the envelope. Yes, of course. And <laughs> so just, I think, a piece of paper uh, that I have left from in one of the pages. So have I stuck this bit here? Yeah, good girl. And even the envelopes are printed both sides. You don't have to do it, but um, I don't like to see blank areas. <laughs> So um, it was easy when you, no, actually I didn't. I can feel it sticker. No, I think I forgot to print it on the dub on the other side. So then I printed the second page of this, of the, one of these uh, folio pages, and I've just stuck a piece here and I trimmed around. And I'm sure that I've done the same here. Yeah, so that's uh, just a piece of paper. So you can use any scrap paper that you have if you want to do double-sided. You don't have to do it from the same kit. Oh, that is sticking here. Let me do it now. <laughs> Sorry. Opa. And yeah, same here. Stuck something. Yeah, I think I said it. Sorry, Karen, memory. <laughs> and must be something here, of course. Yeah, so here I've got another piece here. And I put this lace uh, below. And, and yeah, and that's it, I think. Sorry to make it uh, so long. This is just um, um, a gift that, which this one, I think it's coffee stained. Yeah, I made this probably, I don't know. 11 12 years ago and i still have so many of them i got excited when i discovered this coffee stained uh, method or yeah before the tea staining so i made i think a bunch of i don't know how many and um so i have many of these um and that's it i had this little piece here which i've added and then oops oh that's not good got stuck here and this piece, let me, oh no, it got stuck, it's stuck here again. I've just layered and layered and layered because this is basically the front of the folio. So I um, I just use, let me see, because someone asked me how many layers I'm using. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it creates, like it gives it like volume and it's not just a card stack so uh, i think it's like a mini topper i would say and then i found somehow two pieces of ribbon like silk both sides which i like but i had just two small pieces so i had a very bad i did a very bad job of stitching them together but uh, after and you know but it's here now so it's gonna stay like that uh, thank you so much for watching. Sorry for making it such a long one. I wasn't going into so much detail, but once I started, then you just can't stop in the middle, can you? And uh, I um, I will upload a link to this kit in the um, description, in the commentary. Uh, I'll put both to both shops, so whatever you feel like buying. Thank you so much for watching.